Welcome back to my channel focused on movement and function. I'm Beth Wagner. This video is for you if you completed my back mini self-exam video and found that your back felt better when you were lying on your back, bringing your knee or knees up to your chest. This video might also be helpful for you if in general you find that your back feels better when you're sitting compared to either standing or walking for a long period of time. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the exercises that are going to be best for you. The backbone of your program is going to be flexion, which is reversing the normal curve in your back, opening your lower back. We're looking for your symptoms to move up out of your legs, if you have symptoms in your legs, and toward your back. If you have symptoms just in your buttocks or in your back, we're looking for those symptoms to centralize toward the middle of your spine. And then finally, go away completely. So that's the response that I want you to uh, watch for as you're doing all of these exercises. If your pain gets more severe or runs down your legs, please stop. Then this is, that exercise is not the best for you. Before we jump into the exercises, I wanna talk briefly about breathing. Breathing is a really valuable tool for helping to decrease your pain. When we focus on our breathing, it helps to calm our nervous system. It helps to improve the blood flow. It also changes our focus from paying attention to our pain to paying attention to other parts of our body. So as you go along with these exercises, now and then check in with your breathing. First of all, make sure you're not holding your breath. That is a common thing we all do when we're in pain and it's the exact opposite of what we need to be doing. In general, it's best to inhale as you're preparing for the exercise, exhale as you're initiating the movement, and then inhale as you're returning back to the starting position. I'll show you a couple examples of that as we go along with these exercises. The first exercise is bringing your knee to your chest. You'll start with an inhale to prepare. As you exhale, lift your leg, bring your knee toward your chest, give it a gentle hug. Inhale as you come back to the starting position. A second way to perform this exercise is with both legs toward your chest. You'll start with one leg, Exhale, bring it toward your chest. Inhale, bring the other leg up toward your chest. From here, you have options. You can hold this position, if it feels good to hold it, for anywhere from five to 30 seconds, and then release one leg at a time. Start with 10 to 20 reps of this exercise and see how it feels for your body. Exercise number two is a posterior pelvic tilt. You'll start with your knees bent, feet flat on the table, and then pull your lower abdominal muscles in toward your spine and round your low back. Flatten it so that it comes closer in contact with the surface. And release. Again, inhale as you prepare, exhale as you tilt your pelvis and then inhale as you relax. Try holding this for five to 30 seconds, if that feels good for your body. You can experiment with these. Start with 10 to 20 repetitions. Exercise number three is a figure four stretch. You'll start with your knees bent and feet flat on the table. Bring one leg up and cross your ankle over the opposite knee. And this makes sort of a figure four. From here, you can gently press down on the inside of your thigh. Monitor how this feels in your knee joint and your hip joint and make sure you're not pressing too hard. You should feel a stretch in the backside of your hip and your buttocks. Hold for anywhere between five and 30 seconds and do this three times on each leg. Part two of that exercise is a piriformis stretch. The piriformis is a muscle that lies deep inside the buttocks and is definitely related to low back pain. With this exercise, start with your knees bent, feet flat on the surface, cross one leg over the other. This time, gently lift your knee towards the opposite shoulder. 
my right knee is coming toward my left shoulder. Hold for five to 30 seconds and do this three times on each leg. And return to the starting position. So those are the basic exercises you'll want to do lying down. And then I have a couple others to show you sitting up and standing up. The next exercise is a seated flexion exercise. You could do this sitting on a chair, on the couch, or on the edge of your bed, wherever you're comfortable. You'll want to place your hands on the support surface and simply bend forward and then sit back up again. With this one, breathing is really important. You'll want to inhale first, exhale as you lower, and then inhale as you come up. The reason for that is so that you don't increase too much pressure in your trunk as you bend forward. Increased pressure in the abdominal area can be irritating for low back pain. So be sure you're exhaling any time that you're crunching or compressing through your abdomen. Do anywhere between one and five repetitions. And I don't recommend holding this exercise. So just a brief pause at the bottom and come back up. The last exercise is a standing hip flexor stretch. You'll want to reach out for a wall or the edge of a countertop, step one foot back, have one foot forward, and then tilt your pelvis back, sort of like tucking your tail under. This might make your back knee bend and that's just fine if it does. And then lunge forward. So your back is not arched like this, but is tucked under like this. You wanna feel a stretch in the front of the hip on the side that the leg is back. Hold this position for about 20 seconds and repeat two times on each leg. With all of these exercises, start by doing them four times a day if you have enough time in your schedule. Then as your symptoms improve, you can decrease the frequency of these exercises to three times a day and then two times a day for maintenance. One of the first mistakes people make is to decrease these exercises too soon. In other words, they're feeling great, they're doing their regular activities again, and they stop doing the exercises and pain returns. Don't get frustrated if that happens for you. It's just a reminder that things are getting better, but they're not all the way better yet. So you just need to continue doing these exercises a bit longer. A few modifications for these exercises include varying the repetitions that you do, varying the duration of the hold, and varying how many times you do them a day. You might find that one or two of those six exercises feels really good for you and you like to do it a lot. Maybe some of the other ones aren't as helpful. So do those less frequently. Beyond these exercises, the best type of conditioning activity for you is likely to be biking or swimming. Oftentimes, prolonged walking or doing the treadmill or elliptical or that type of upright conditioning exercise can be a bit aggravating for your back. If you like to walk but you're finding it painful, try to change your route to incorporate some places where you can take a seated rest break. If you enjoy weightlifting, I recommend taking a break for a week or two until your back feels much better before you return to weights. If you enjoy activities that involve jumping, running, or any kind of bouncing, try to also take a two week break from those activities in order to decrease the compression going through your spine. The last thing I wanna talk about briefly is your sleeping position. I recommend trying to put one or two pillows underneath your knees when you're sleeping on your back and one pillow between your knees when you're sleeping on your side. This helps to take a bit of the pressure off of your back. It helps to open the low back and keep you out of an overly arched position in your sleep. Experiment with the density, the thickness uh, of the pillows and see what works best for you. Okay, time to wrap up this video. I hope that you found this information and the exercises helpful to relieve your back pain and hopefully give you a new way of looking at your back and understanding what's going on in your body. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so, and feel free to share this video with anybody else who you think might benefit from its content. If you'd like to be notified when I release my next video, click the bell. 
and it's always great to see a thumbs up. Here's to your health, healing, and happiness.